This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Shh. You'll have to be very quiet tonight because one of our guests is asleep in the deep. <laughs> Poor chap, he was a sailor by trade, an old salt named Peter. I had a corpse in every port, but I'm afraid he went overboard. You see, people made him sad, and he had a nasty habit of drowning his sorrows. <laughs> his last voyage was over a large body of water, the Dead Sea, and he was blown into it by a stiff wind. But it was too crowded down there. Five phantoms deep. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Cause of Death, was written by Bob Sloan and Ed Adamson and stars Barry Kroger in the role of Ken with Santa Ortega as Al. Well, Gather round, my friends, and you shall hear the midnight tale of death and fear. It's full of ghosts and rich in gore, and if you listen, you'll sleep no more. <laughs> now sit back in your uneasy chairs as Ken Griswold tells us his weird story. Death held no terror for a man like me. I'd seen the dead too often, lived among them, worked among them. And to touch the still, cold flesh of a corpse was a routine experience. For ten years, I'd been the coroner of Redmond County. I'd seen death in all its cruel, twisted forms. And yet, there had never been one like this. It all began up at the lake. Even a coroner has nerves, and mine had begun to get the best of me. So Inspector Al Hendricks gave me a week off, and I went up to Grandview Lodge alone. On the third day of my vacation, I was sitting on the lakefront dock when I heard my name called. Ken! I turned and saw Al Hendricks coming quickly down the hill. Ken! I'm afraid you'll have to interrupt your vacation. What? You've got to come back to town. Come back to town? When? By the way, I'm driving you in. Oh, now, wait, Al. I haven't had a vacation in almost three years. I know, I know. I wouldn't ask you to come if it wasn't important. This is a very special case. Why? What's so special about this case? Uh, a woman was found dead in her house at 11 this morning. There doesn't seem to be any visible reason for her death. Oh, well, there's got to be a reason. So far, we can't find one. There's always a reason. You'll find one. You'll have to find it for us, Ken. Me? Why must it be me? When you get there, you'll understand why. What do you mean, why? Because it's Helen. What? Yes, Ken. The woman who died is your wife. There she is, Ken. Al Hendricks pulled back the sheet. And for the first time, I saw my wife, Ellen, in death. Her face was twisted into a strange smile. And her eyes seemed to stare at me through half-open lids. But somehow... The aura of the dead wasn't about her. It was as if... As if she were only asleep. Dr. Vincent and I stayed there for three hours. Testing, analyzing, checking back over every bit of evidence which might give us an inkling of the cause of death. And when we were finished, I asked Dr. Vincent to send Al in. Well, Ken, what's the verdict? Al, there is no verdict... What? It doesn't seem possible, Al. I can't believe it. Yet it's true. What are you talking about? Ellen's death. There's absolutely no cause, Al. There's no reason for her to be dead. Now, wait a minute, Ken. You said yourself on the way down from the lake, if somebody dies, there's got to be a reason for it. Some cause that makes them stop living. Yes, that's what I said, but this is different. Death is death. How can this be different from any other? I don't know, but it is. You mean she just stopped living? Only you can't explain it. No, that's not what I mean. I have a feeling that Ellen didn't stop living. That she didn't stop living at all. <laughs> On the official certificate, the cause of death was listed as unknown. Two days later, Ellen was buried. 
That night, I sat in the half-dark living room. Outside, a howling wind slashed at the French windows that led to the lawn. I couldn't sleep. Couldn't get the thought out of my mind. The thought that I should never have allowed them to bury Ellen. I just sat there. The idea searing deeper and deeper into my mind. And suddenly, one of the French windows was flung open. And the cold wind whipped into the dim-lit room. I've come back. At first, I thought it was just the echoing wind playing tricks. Then I heard it again, stronger. I'm here, Kate. It was her voice. Ellen's. You're not afraid, are you, Kate? She stepped out of the shadows and stood there before me in the yellow light of the lamp. She was dressed just the way she was when they put her in the coffin. The gold bracelet I had given her glistened on her wrist. Why do you look at me that way? It's not you, Ellen. Oh, yes. It can't be. You're dead. Am I? Really? You were buried this morning. You died two days ago. Don't you remember, Ken? You told Inspector Hendricks I heard you. Ellen didn't stop living. Oh, oh, this is just a dream. You know why I didn't stop living, Ken? It's because you can't make a wish like that come true. What wish? Don't you remember? You said to me, Ellen, I wish you were dead. No! No, Ellen, I always loved you. You didn't. You never did. When Carl was nice to me, you hated us both for it. You thought I was going to Carl, and so you made your wish. You wished no, I... that I would die. I, I, I didn't mean it, Ellen. I swear, it was just something I said in anger. You wished me dead, Ken, but you can't kill by willing it. You can see now that I've lived on. <gasps> this isn't real. You're only in my mind. It's just my nerves. No, Ken. Yes, it is. It is. It's nothing but a trick of my imagination. I'm as real as you are. I'm flesh and blood and bone, the same as you here. Here. Touch my head. I I, I moved back. But she kept coming closer and closer. And then I turned and ran across the room. I saw her follow after me. I got to the bedroom door and I slammed it. I turned the key in the lock. I stood there in the dark, my heart hammering a tattoo of fear that shook my whole body. I tightened my fingers around my throat to hold back the scream that cried silently for release. And then it came. She was knocking at the door. I couldn't hold it back any longer. Kevin, you got here? I got the call from your neighbors down the road. I heard you scream. What the deuce has been going on here? She came back, Al. Huh? Ellen, I told you she wasn't dead. Oh, now, look. No, I'm not crazy. You've got to believe me. She was here. She tried to get into this room, and that's why I locked myself Now, you listen to me. The last couple of days have been rough on you. No, no, wait a minute. I know what I'm talking about. Ellen's come back. I said you listen. Your wife was buried this morning. I was at the funeral with you. She was buried, and it's all over. Had a nightmare. But, Al... Just a nightmare. Things like that happen to all of us. She wasn't here. She couldn't have been. It wasn't a dream, Al. She was here. What are you talking about? On the floor, there. That bracelet. That bracelet was on Ellen when she was buried this morning. After Al left, I went out to the cemetery. The moon dropped a pearl-gray blanket over her grave dug feverishly into the fresh earth. I still had to prove to Al that Ellen lived on. The bracelet wasn't enough for him. I dug deeper. Deeper. I just about removed all the dirt that covered the casket top when the shadow of a human form fell across the grave. Hello, Ken. How? I went back to your house. You were gone. I figured this is where I'd find you. You're wasting your time, Ken. She's in there and dead. 
before Al could stop me. I bent down and snapped open the coffin hinge. I pulled up the lid just as he jumped down beside me. Close that coffin! I told you not to... Ken! We stood there in the grave, our eyes fixed, staring into the empty coffin. Al, you've got to listen to me. Now, Ken, do what I told you, will you? Go into your room and get some sleep. We'll talk about it in the morning. Oh, Al, you've got to listen to me now. I can explain everything. I know what happened to Ellen. I know why she wasn't in a car. Someone's playing a trick on us. The dead don't rise from their graves. But she wasn't dead. Not really dead. She was here tonight in this room. That was a dream. No, no. She was real. She spoke to me. She was alive. And she'll be back again tonight. I know it. I can feel her coming closer. Al, she's coming back. She's going to come back. Stop it, Ken. Stop talking like that. I can't face her again. I'm afraid. Don't, 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 don't make me stay here. Al, please. Please, you've got to help me. All right. All right. You can come over to my place. Ah, wait, don't leave me. Now, take it easy. Just wanted to get some of your things out of this closet. Ah! Look! In that closet. <laughs> Helen was in that closet. For a moment, she just stood there, rigid and white, her eyes burning into me, her lips twisted into the same strange smile. She seemed to want to come toward me. But she fell forward to the floor. She lay there, silent and motionless. This time I knew she was really dead. The knife in her back told me that Ellen would never return to me again. I feel kind of sorry for our coroner friend, Ken Griswold. He never should have picked out that sort of job for himself. Working in a morgue is enough to make anybody slab happy. That place can really get you down about six feet down. It's like they say, death is always just around the coroner. <laughs> oh, yes, about Ken's wife, Ellen. Let that be a lesson to you the next time you make a wish over a vulture bone. That's the way some women are. Stubborn. You can't get rid of them. Dead or alive. <laughs> well, now let's get back to Ken Griswold as he continues his tale of terror. After we found Ellen's body in that closet, I knew I had to get away from that house forever. I wanted to run out into the night, but I couldn't move. Some force held me stationary in its grip. The room began to swim crazily. I saw Al Hendricks come towards me, but a black curtain fell between us, and I was lost in a deep hole. Feeling better, Al? Where am I? What is this place? County Hospital. You've been here two days. Two days? Yeah. You blanked out. Ellen, she was murdered. Now, you've got to take it easy, Ken. We won't talk about that now. Well, I have to talk about it. Don't you see, Al? I was right. Ellen had lived on. No, she was already dead. With that knife in her back. You only die once. What I said before still goes. Somebody's playing tricks. Al wouldn't listen to me. He told me to try and get some sleep. Then he pulled down the shades and walked out of the room. A little later, the door of my room opened. In the semi-dark, I could see that it was a woman dressed in white. She stood at the foot of my bed. Good evening. Who, who are you? Well, I'm your nurse, sir. Here, drink this. Ellen. My name isn't Ellen. I'm just the nurse. You're Ellen. You've come back again. Now, now, you mustn't excite yourself. Just, just, no, please, drink this. No, no. You'll no, sleep. No, don't. You'll feel much better after. You've come to take me with you. I know what's in that glass. You can trust me. It won't hurt you. I won't you. die. Take it away. Take it away. Oh, no, no. I knocked the glass out of her hand. Crashed to the floor. She just stood there looking down at me, that same twisted smile on her face. I slid out of the bed. Now, you mustn't get up, sir. You're not well. She came towards me, her hand outstretched, just like the other time. She came closer and closer. Let me help you back. No. I won't hurt you. I got to the door and opened it. I started to run down the corridor when something grabbed my arm. Let me tight to the spot now. Let go. Please, for heaven's sake, let go of me. Let go of me. Now, take it easy, Ken. Please, Take Cam. it easy. 
Ow! What's the matter with you? You're supposed to stay in bed. Oh, let me go. i got to get out of here. You're going back to your room. No, Al, I can't go back there. Don't make me. She's there. What? Ellen, she's come back again. Hey, now, look. No, you've got to believe me. She's in there waiting for no, me. No, Ken, it's just your nerves. I was outside the door. Oh, her voice and her face weren't the same, but I knew who she was. I could tell by that smile of hers. She's posing as my nurse. That's how she got in. But that can't be, Ken. You don't have a nurse. <laughs> You don't have to worry about her coming back anymore, Ken. Ah, oh, she will. It's all in your mind. I think I can make you see that now. What do you mean? You felt responsible for Ellen's death because of that fight you had with her. That's why your imagination ran wild. Oh, but Al, that bracelet, her body in the closet. Like I told you, she was dead all the time. Somebody was playing tricks. The man who murdered your wife, we've got a lead on him. What are you talking about? What man? One of your neighbors gave us the tip. Two o'clock in the morning on that day your wife was found dead, a man was seen leaving your house. He was tall and wore a black hat and coat. The murderer must have known that you were at Grandview Lake. But it couldn't have been murder. The autopsy would have shown that. We couldn't find any cause for Ellen's death. There's always a cause. We'll find Ellen's murderer somehow. When Al left, I thought back over everything he'd told me. Someone was playing tricks. A tall man in a black hat and coat. I kept searching my mind, probing... And then the idea struck. Something Ellen had said. When Carl was nice to me, you hated us both for it. You thought I was going to Carl. So you made your wish. Carl. Carl Denson. They wouldn't allow me to leave, but I found a way of getting out of that hospital. And I went to see Dr. Carl Denson. Yes, what is... Hello, Denson. Why, Ken Griswold. I want to talk to you. Yes, of course. Come in, come in. I heard you were in the hospital. I got out of there tonight. The way you uh, say that, that... Call it escape, if you want to. Look, Griswold, you're not well. And that's what you want them to believe, that I'm crazy. I don't know what you're talking I'm about. talking about Ellen. You killed her, Denson. What? You murdered my wife. You couldn't have her for yourself, so you killed her. You're mad. I read the report. Ellen died of causes unknown. You killed her. And now I know how you did it. You're a doctor. You'd know about things like that. There's an artery in the neck, the carotid. If you apply pressure on it the right way, the victim dies. And there's no evidence of murder. You can't bluff me, Griswold. I, 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 I came out here. I to kill you. Then to choke the life out of you. Like this. I changed my mind. You fool. You crazy fool, get out of here. Yes, Denton, I changed my mind. You're going to die in the electric chair. I told you to get out. I'm going to prove that you killed Ellen. You can't because I didn't. A man was seen leaving the house on the morning Ellen was murdered. You were that man, Denson. You knew I was up at Grandview Lake. You waited until I was away. You forgot something, Griswold. It couldn't have been me. I'll prove it. You forget. At the same time you were up at Grandview Lake, I was there too. I went back in my mind, and I remembered that Carl Denson had been at Grandview Lake while I was there. But I knew Denson was the murderer. He was the man in the black hat and coat. He had found some way to come back to town and kill Ellen. But I had to prove it. I started out to retrace his steps on the night of the murder. The train let me off at the Grandview Lake Station at four in the morning. I phoned for the village taxi and ordered the sleepy driver to take me out to the lodge. Uh, I don't like to make trips this time of the night, mister. Don't worry, I'll pay you extra for it. Only hurry. I can't go much faster. Trouble with you city folks, always hurrying to get nowhere. Reminds me of the fellow I drove last week. City fella, too. Got off the 401, just like you. Says he's in a hurry. Wait a minute. Yes? You said he got off that same train? Yep, that's what he said. Same train as you. What day was that? Uh, let's see. Was it Tuesday? Tuesday? Yes, yes, it was Tuesday that. Uh, what did he look like? What do you want to know from me? Tell me, what did he look like? Well, he was a tall fella. Didn't talk none tall. Couldn't see much of his face, had his coat collar up. 
thing about that. It wasn't gold, either. Was he wearing a black hat? Come to think of it, I guess he was. Yeah. Black hat and coat. Where did you drive him to? Same place you're going, mister. Grandview Lake Lodge. That proved it. I was right. Denson had gone to town to kill Alan. Then when he finished, he returned on the early morning train. I had him now. There was just one more step left. When I walked into the lodge, George, the night clerk, was behind the desk. Good morning, Dr. Griswold. Hello, Griswold. George. Uh, we weren't expecting you, but we have a room. I'm not we? staying. Oh? George, I need your help. Yes, of course. What is it? It's important. You must remember something. Uh, remember? About Dr. Denson. You know him? Yes, certainly. Well, this happened just one week ago, last Tuesday morning, at the same time. You were on duty then? Uh, yes. And you would have seen anyone walk through the lobby here? Yes, I would. Dr. Denson returned to the lodge last Tuesday morning. He was wearing a black hat and coat. He came in here at this same time. You saw him. No. But you must have. I didn't. He came in here. I have proof. The cab driver who brought him here from the station saw him enter the lobby. I didn't see Dr. Denson that morning. You're lying. You did. No, sir. The only person who came in early last Tuesday was you. What? You came in, Dr. Griswold. You wore a black hat and coat, and you asked me for a key to your room. Me? That's right, Ken. It was you all the time. How? Now, be good, Ken. Don't make me use this gun. And how did you hear what he said? Yeah? That means I killed her. I was waiting for you, Ken. I knew you'd come. I'll let you find out for yourself. I, I don't remember. You're a doctor. You know about those things, split personalities and stuff like that. You just can't see it in yourself, I guess. But her body in the closet. That was you, too. I followed you out to the cemetery. You thought she was still alive. That's why you put the knife on her back. I'm no expert on those things, Ken, but that's the way it looks to me. Okay. Let's go. I couldn't go back with him, not that way. I ran across the lobby. Stop, Ken! Stop it, I have to shoot! I got to the door and then... Oh. Oh. Well, it burned in my chest. Al turned me over on my back. I'm sorry, Ken. It's all right, Al. This is just the way I wanted it. <laughs> Al's gone for a doctor. I haven't got much longer. I know. I won't be here when Al comes back. I won't give them any trouble with this one. The cause of death. This one's easy to determine. <laughs> Say, no wonder that Ken Griswold was glad to die. Some wives are bad enough alive, but imagine being henpecked by a corpse. You know, that's the trouble with the folks you meet around here. They're dead, but they just don't know enough to lie down. <laughs> oh, by the way, there's a good moral in tonight's nerve-shattering narrative. If you're thinking of doing away with your spouse, forget it. Brother, you haven't got a ghost of a chance. <laughs> this is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.